All right, y'all, we are here at the barn, the shop, and we're getting ready to make some wooden beams for a vaulted ceiling. And we are gonna distress them, which distress means we're basically just gonna build them and just beat the, beat the hell out of them and uh, make them look uh, scarred up and, and whatnot. So I'll show you kind of what we got going on. So here is all the wood that we purchased for the beams. This is just spruce. Pretty inexpensive. Well, now it is. The price has come down a little bit. But this is going to be the main beam, which is a 1x8. Uh, they are 10 feet long, and I've got six of them because the room is about 19-ish feet long. So the main beam will be an 8x8. Eight eight. These will be the bottoms of the main runner beams, which are a 1x6x14. And these will be the sides, which are a 1x4 by these are 16 but they're only going to need to be about 14 feet long on the bottom we will put a double 45 degree bevel on the bottom and then one side will have 45 on each side that way when we put it together we'll have a three-sided box and we're just going to use the table saw because we're basically just going to put it together and beat the fire out of it and we don't have to be precise on the corners This is the bottom, the end result. We've got two 45 degree miters for the bottom of the beam, but the sides of the main beam, I have ripped one side, which is the bottom, which is a 45 degree bevel. The top, which the ceiling is going to be vaulted at a 612 pitch. So I'm basically just gonna rip, I don't know, maybe about a, maybe about a 15 degree bevel that way when it butts to the ceiling uh we got a lot more it's a little sharper we won't have this this uh raw edge to deal with we can actually sand it against to fit the contour of the ceiling if need be a little easier with a 15 degree bevel using pin nailers right now or a pin nailer and they go back and put a few trim screws in like I said you could use a glue joint with a, a shaper or a router bit but since this is going to be distressed and, and like we're going to beat the fire out of it I'm, I really wasn't worried about it I'm going to go ahead and use some, uh, I believe there's a GRK uh, trim head screws, fasteners. I'm going to use those to kind of really suck it tight. Then we just go back and put a little wood putty on there and you'll never know it. A little tool tip, had a little blowout. Pair of channel locks. Got it right out with minimal damage. I have five and a half inches right here. So I just had Brent cut a few blocks and we'll just put them right there till the glue dries. That way it kind of have a memory when we, when we take uh, the block. You can definitely do this without mitering the corners, but 
it won't look as good <laughs> it just won't this gives you a little more looks more like a, a natural beam you know on a natural beam you're not going to see the bottom of the one by against the one by you know so it'll look more more like this more true just a tip all right we have all of the center beams and the side beams uh ripped up and ready to put together we're gonna have a one by six bottom and a one by four side and like i said we'll have two each on each side we'll have just like a we won't have a u-beam we'll just have a two-sided beam because we'll have a nailer on the wall and on the ceiling that we'll be able to fasten it to So this is what I was talking about when I had a two-sided beam. I'm gonna have the, this will be up against the ceiling and this will be against the wall. So I'll have a nailer here and a nailer here. So just two-sided, that why two-sided beam. Mm -hmm. Hence the word pose. Yeah. Oh. Just kid. Yeah. Hold on. Take two. We've got all the beams together. We got four middle beams which go along the uh, vertical side of the ceiling. These are two end beams. The other two end beams, which go up against the fireplace, so they're a little shorter. And then the two very, the, the middle beams, the main beams, I guess you would say. Uh, but that's it. We'll start uh, distressing them and beating the fire out of them. Now we to the fun part. We're getting ready to distress these beams. And I'll show a few of the tools that I'm gonna use. Uh, just a sawzall, just kind of, just a rough blade. Flapper wheel, I really kind of distress these corners really well. Log chain, uh, we got a concrete stake right here, and uh, probably a hammer. So, just just whatever you got, don't really matter. Just gonna rough the rough it up really good. But this is a probably an eighty grit. Greet <laughs> 80 grit flapper wheel and it really works really good This is gonna all depend on you however however gnarly you want it all right, I hit both sides, both top corners with the uh, flapper wheel. I'll just take the sawzall and just kind of kind of rough it up a little bit. But this this part right here is definitely going to bring out the, uh, the stain really well. I'm just trying to mimic saw marks. Log chain. Little mushroom out. <laughs> Concrete stake. Just roll it. There. Just whatever you feel like, dude. And then I just got some 180 grit on the uh, sander and just kind of smooth it up a little bit. All right, 
we got the two ceiling beams distressed and we're ready for some stain and some polycrylic clear coat for the top. Uh, still got these to do, so we'll get on those in the morning because it is hot. H-O-T, hot today. So uh, we'll get back at you and finish these beams up so we can get them installed. We was doing a little experimenting with some stain colors. We're just gonna use uh, the min wax. But I think if we do two parts red mahogany with uh, one part dark mahogany, I think we can get it kind of in that same tone. It's not gonna be a perfect match, but this is gonna be on the ceiling, this is on the floor. So as long as it's that kind of same tone, it's kind of what we're going for. I'll just put it in this bucket and mix it up. The drill. All right, let's do a little stain. We did one, it looks pretty good. I'll just put the stain on there and we just let it set for just a minute. It, not very long. I'm gonna wipe it off. I think that looks pretty badass myself. Let it dry and put some uh, polyacrylic clear coat on top. That's the last bean. We're gonna let these dudes dry till after lunch. And like I said, we're gonna use some poly acrylic uh, latex clear. So this is what I am using, the Minwax poly acrylic crystal clear finish, clear satin. And I just put it into my cup gun and I'm going to spray it on there. We'll do a quick coat, we'll let that dry. We'll hit it with some 400 sandpaper and then put a final coat on it. Using a 400 grit sandpaper after the uh, first coat of clear and sand it off and wipe them down. And we'll spray another coat of clear on top. All right, y'all, it is installation day for the faux wood beams. We are here at my friend's house and uh, we'll take you inside and we'll get started. All right, so we got scaffolding set up. And like I said, we're gonna have a main runner beam down the center and then end beams, beam, beam, and then a beam up in the corner over there, so. Well, uh, first we're gonna start with putting two by twos down the center. We'll find the width of the beam, mount those to the uh, trusses, and then we'll be able to actually slide the beam up over the two by twos. So what I did was I got my torpedo found center, plumbed down. The inside of my beam is five and a half inches wide. That's what that is, it's five and a half inches. Then I got a mark on the ceiling and we will laser all the way across to there and that'll keep us straight. So we got the laser set up. I got it on my mark there and then Brent has it on his mark over here. So 
now we have a place where we can fasten the uh, two by two to the ceiling. So what we have is a two by two with a 26 degree bevel on it. That way when we screw it up to the vaulted ceiling, it will be vertically plumb. And then we went ahead and found the layout for the trusses and started some screws right there. Some GRK fasteners. Look at him. Now here's just a little closer view of the double two by twos. Inside of my beam is five and a half inches and this is five and a half shy, maybe five and three eighths in places. That way we can kind of slide it up over there below. Give us a little uh, forgiveness if we need it. All right, well, we got the beam, the main beam that is gonna tie into the fireplace. We just loosen up, pull the, the rocks loose, and after we set the beam, then we'll come back in and cut, cut the uh, stone to fit around the beam. That way we'll get a nice, really nice, Clark <laughs> tight fit. So there's one piece, the other piece, of course, will go there, and we'll just have to put a band around the end of it to kind of make that joint. All right, so we took the whole length of the room and divided it by three. And that will give us our equal points to where our beams need to go. So once I measured and found my point, which I just used blue painter tape, we set the laser up and come over off this wall and measured the same measurement. And now we have the laser line that we can uh, put our brackets to. All right, so we do not have wood blocking up in between the trusses since we this was not anticipated this is 10 years later after we built the house so i've got these things and uh don't use them <laughs> they are the devil they are horrible i mean they probably hold a lot of weight but they are a son of a bitch to get in there so but you can see them in there that's why brent's doing it because i can't i'm about to lose every bit of my sanity but anyway, we've got those mounted to the ceiling and the beam is in a C shape and it'll just go right over the top and then we can mount to the side and then I can screw into the top plate here and then we can screw into the beam at the top. So two in the middle should be sufficient. All right, we did a test run on one of the beams before we started recording, but yeah. We just got it in there. I've got, like I said, I, can, I got my brackets right here. And we're just screwing into the side of the bracket, holding it up into the ceiling. And then I'm screwing it into the top plate on this side. And then we can just screw it into the top of the beam right there as well. So this is what I got going on here. Here's a piece of beam that we cut off the first one, which has my angle. And then I can use this to test, cut, you know, make sure my angle fits properly. But I'm just going to use this. Stick it to where my beam goes. Make sure it's good tight fit on the around the sides and the bottom. <clears throat> and then I'll just mark the bottom. That way I can measure from up there from the top to the bottom and have an accurate place, <clears throat> excuse me, to measure from. So you see Brent's gonna take the piece of beam. Stick it in there nice, make sure everything fits, and then mark the bottom. And then we will have a measuring point at the top. And then, like I did here, I did the same thing down at the bottom, and we can measure and get a pretty, pretty accurate measure.
We're tying up against the fireplace and got to get in that tight corner. And we installed a bracket, I just screwed it to the wall and then we'll be able to just fasten here. And then we can go into the top plate down there. But I just took a little scrap piece of block. And uh, instead of taking the stone off, which is really, <laughs> in this tight corner is really gonna be a pain in the ass really. So we just marked it and uh, scribed it to fit the stone. And I think we'll be, We'll be good enough. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be really hard to take and, and recut this stone up top, especially in this inverted corner. So we can't get the saw in there. And then instead of taking all this stone off, we'll, we're just gonna scribe it. So I think it'll be good. y'all looking tight got our beams up there we like these last two end beams we've got two brackets that we just screw up into the dead wood up in the ceiling or the truss we're gonna mark top and bottom measure put that in there and the only one we're gonna kind of have a slight issue with is right here so i don't know i think i, I think I'm just going to take the beam and return it into the ceiling because I think it'd look better than hanging down and then trying to build something crazy right here. So I think that's what we're going to do is just bring it down and then it'll be flush with the bottom of the header and kill it off into the ceiling. Like I said, this is gonna be a little, little funky. I'm taking my square and squared off the bottom of the header, and then I'm coming from this point to that point, which it's not perfectly level, but it's is really close. But we want it to match the ceiling. And uh, so, and then we will put a mitered cap on the bottom to where it still looks like, you know, a solid piece of wood. So stay tuned, <laughs> stay tuned. So this is what we ended up doing. Just basically cutting that on the skew of the roof, then took this little piece that we cut off of here. That way we keep it, you know, it's all the same board. And uh, mitered this side and then just beveled this side. So that's what we got. it is that's how it that's how it turned out i think it's the best thing to do in this situation like i said without having to build a huge corbel or something i don't know and then it really wouldn't go in here so i mean it's it's not the ideal situation but that's what we came up with and that's what we're going to do but the rest of it looks awesome it turned out great really made a made a huge difference Get those stones cut right there and ready to go. All right, the last little piece of stone. Just using a little silicone, stick it back on there. It will hold fine. No more than uh, the size of this. Got it, coach. And that's that. <laughs> so we get back down to these, let me turn it on. Get down to these anchors. <laughs> it might've been operator error. I did not have good luck with it. Uh, Brent was able to put them all in there. So he, 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 could, he could do it. I, don't, I, was, I was about to lose all of my sanity. So, so I just got frustrated. But they are a good anchor. They really, they really held, I think they held really well. I don't know the pound rating on them, but they definitely can hold uh, uh, significant amount of weight so those are a good anchor I was I, I was just uh, 
I was just a, uh, a little irritated. You know how sometimes you're in the woods, you see a tree's got some names carved in and stuff? Since we distressed these, here. Let me show you. Got some, got some initials in there and some, and some kids' names, and I ain't gonna tell them. Shh, so be quiet. Don't say, don't say nothing. <laughs> Let's see, where's that other one? Just up there. And then maybe over here too. Yeah. Shh, don't say nothing. <laughs> all right y'all that was it that's how we actually custom built some faux distressed wood beams installed them and i i think it looks really good i'm i'm <laughs> pretty pretty tickled with the outcome so uh if you like what we're doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button keep following and uh thanks for watching